the Super Bowl media day, as much a circus as anything else, and quite a bit of entertaining going on down on the field. And one of those guys putting on quite a show, Nick Eason from Toons County. Do you eat steel? Steel? No, I eat. Uh, I love fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, collard greens, uh, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes, good mashed potatoes, compadre. Uh, you, uh, you got a mama? She down here? Yeah, yeah. She cook? Yeah, man. You, you in Spanish, right? Yeah, I'm from Mexico, carnal. You like burrito? We have burrito I, love, tacos. I love burritos. You like burritos? The big California burrito is Thank you for some macaroni and cheese and a yeah. burrito with some chicken. <laughs> yeah, man. So you, <laughs> in, you mix everything together. I, in a burrito, I will. <laughs> yeah. Don't you? Yeah, you can do it, man. What you put in your burrito? Uh, everything, man. What's everything? Eggs, steak, chicken, really? lettuce, tomato, potato. Well, why you didn't bring it in? Everything, man. It finished with eight of You're so small, I can probably put you in my stomach. Man. <laughs> <laughs> man. This is for, for half move. Uh, Fast in the field. I no man. I. Where you at, though? Listen. That's the coach. That's the coach with the whistle. Where you at? A little jump. A little jump. Forgive Nick Eason for not being totally focused Tuesday and letting loose with a little fun. Eason's path to the Super Bowl included missing his entire rookie season in Denver with an Achilles tear, followed by a few less than memorable seasons with Cleveland, and finally a chance to play on a contender with Pittsburgh, which makes him appreciate where he is even more. You got to enjoy it. You got to embrace it. You got to embrace the media, you know, the fans, the, the you know, everything. Uh, you, you, you don't fight it. You know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So, you know, any chance you get to have a little fun, you, you, you should do that. You know, come Sunday, after Sunday, the season's over with. And, uh, you know, as everyone here knows, you know, you know, next year is a different year. It's a whole different year. You know, whatever happens Sunday, you know, there could be, you know, two new teams in next year's Super Bowl. It happens every year. So you just have to you know, you know why you're here, enjoy why you're here. Do you appreciate this even more, the things that you've gone through? You come in the league, uh -huh. you know, you missed the first year mm -hmm. with an injury. Does mm -hmm. it make you appreciate it? Oh, man, you know, I, I really appreciate it, man. God has been really good to me. And, uh, you know, I was in Denver, as you already know, like I said earlier, and, and then uh, I was in Cleveland for three years. And, you know, that was uh, not so good of an experience. And, uh, you know, I ended up in Pittsburgh not really knowing, you know, what was going to, how I was going to fit in on the team. But the guys embraced me here. And, and, uh, you know, I've contributed, you know, a lot on the special team, coming in as a backup, and, and, and it's been a good experience for me. I have great coaches, great ownership, uh, you know, great teammates, and so it's been really awesome. You fit in pretty well with the team. You've only been here for a couple of years. Yeah. You've already become pretty good friends with Troy yeah. Palomalo. Yeah. Talk a little bit about him off the field. Off the field, I know on the field he's pretty wild and, yeah. and hitting people, but off the field you guys share a bond, a, a yeah. religious bond. You know, too. yeah, yeah. Troy is, uh, you know, very strong in his faith, and you know, I look up to him, you know, for what he is, and not as really. I look up to him more as a person, and then as a football player. He's a great football player, uh, but the way the, the, the dedication that he he has to God is is just unbelievable. You know, day in and day out, he's the same, and uh, you know, I look up to him for that. He's a very much of a role model for me and a good friend, but more of a role model, uh, you know, from a Christian standpoint. And, uh, you know, he's, he's an awesome guy, awesome guy. He's quiet, and uh, but he is a pretty much of a big prankster. He gets away with a lot of things. I can tell you a neat story. You know, last year, uh, you know, my first year in, in uh, 2007, I was sitting on a plane, and uh, he handed me a Twix. And uh, so I took a bite of it. It was kind of crunchy. And so I opened it up, and I was like, maybe they got a new uh, Twix uh, out. And I come to find out he ate the caramel off the Twix and gave it to me. And I ate it. <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of like, you know, he does a little stuff like that. Guys don't really, some guys that don't really know him know that he has a real good sense of humor. And uh, he plays into that very well. But he's an awesome guy, awesome football player. And, uh, you know, it's, I've, been, I've been very fortunate to get to know him. And even though he's on sports' biggest stage, Nick says he'll never forget where he comes from. Uh, but it's, it's just absolutely a blessing, man, to be able to be here and play in the Super Bowl and be from a small town. And, you know, I know everybody at home, all my coaches, my family, my friends, and everyone will be watching. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. How often do you get back? Uh, I try to get back uh, uh, quite a bit in the off, off season. Uh, spend time with my family. I have two beautiful daughters, uh, Zamani and Zipporah. And uh, so I try to spend a little, you know, some time with them and, and uh, with my mother, my grandparents, and my family. And, uh, but, you know, I like it down there. It's a, not a, it's a very small town, and uh, everybody knows everybody, including the business as well. 
But, you know, I enjoy coming back and, and being able to go down there and, and, and do some good for my community. You know, Clemson, you know, basically, you know, kind of got my foot in the door to have the opportunity to be where I'm at now. And I give credit to, you know, my high school, my, my uh, college experience, and, you know, being a Tiger and being able to be, to be able to play in the big game is, is a, quite a great opportunity. So I'm going to do my best to represent everyone well. And how does that feel for you to have all those people back home rooting for you? Oh, man, it's, a, it's an awesome feeling. Uh, you know, obviously from, from my family, my friends, Clemson University will uh, be watching and uh, Toombs County High School Bulldogs will be watching. So uh, it's awesome that, you know, I'm the guy, you know, this week. And uh, it's just an awesome experience. I'm very fortunate, very blessed to be here. Easton's not the only athlete from Southeast Georgia playing in Sunday's big game, though, as Savannah's own Ben Patrick from Jenkins High School will be lining up on the other side of the ball as tight end for Arizona. Yeah, I don't think it's still you know, set in all that I've uh, accomplished from Jenkins to Duke to Delaware to here. I'm just trying to take it in right now and you know, get as many pictures as possible, but you know, it's just a real feeling right now. and uh, Wouldn't be a better feeling than to, to bring home a championship to Savannah. Yeah, how often are you able to get home? You're, you're usually once or twice a year if I'm lucky. Um, you know, after this is all over, I, you know, I hope you get back home in about three or four weeks and uh, just kind of hang out and try to catch up with some old friends. All right, the big question, who got your Super Bowl tickets and how much of a hassle was it to give them away? Hey, just, just immediate family. You know, my mom, my brother, uh, my sister-in-law, and my uncle, my aunt. That was it. I didn't want to deal with anything else, and uh, you know, that was the least headache I would, I would get, so that was, that was enough for me. How's your health? I know you're put, listed as questionable. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Absolutely, I'm fine. There's, there's no way I wouldn't play this game Sunday, and uh, I'm just going to give it my best shot. Have you been able to let it all sink in yet? No, absolutely not. I mean, this is the biggest stage in the world, and uh, you know, even just the media itself. I mean, there's, there's a ton of people, but uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, after this is all over with today, we can get back to work tomorrow and you know start gearing in for the game. What's your media day experience been like? Any crazy questions you got? Actually, yeah, I, I talked to a, uh, a Spanish man that was dressed up as a woman. I really, I knew I would see some things at the Super Bowl, but I uh, wasn't really banking oh. on that one. So that, that was a little weird. That was weird. What's your thoughts on the game? No pressure at all. This is a, you know, we're going to treat this like a, you know, any other game that we prepare for the season. You know, the outcome is going to be magnified, but um, we're going to prepare just like we prepared all, all year, and uh, hopefully we'll be all right. In Tampa, the site for Super Bowl 43, Josh Aubrey reporting.